Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Today I want to talk about fluid service intervals and what I recommend based on my experience of working on Fords for the last 15 years, day in and day out. You'd be surprised how much longer a vehicle like this, 15 year old vehicle, will last if you change the fluids at shorter than specified intervals. This whole marketing campaign for lifetime fluids in these vehicles is total marketing BS, designed to show lower cost of ownership. Meanwhile, they're, they're driving you into the service department sooner than later for hard part failures, making their service departments and dealership principals much, much happier, okay? That's the whole idea of we want to drive more and more service into the service departments at the Ford dealerships and keep it there. So first we're going to talk about uh, the trucks and then we're going to go into the engine compartment and talk about a few things that apply to all Ford vehicles. And then we're going to go end it with uh, cars and small SUVs because the powertrains and drivetrains do vary. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, like I said, is trucks. So anything like an F-150, uh, Super Duty, Excursion, Expedition, Explorer, back when they were frame-based, they all have the same powertrains and drivetrains set up, uh, so it's going to apply to all of them. So let's start off in the front here with the front differential. Now the front differential on many of these newer Ford vehicles, starting in 04 and F-150s anyway, 03 on the Expeditions, they're disconnected at the wheel ends and the transfer case. So they're just kind of sitting here, sitting pretty, not doing a darn thing unless you select 4x4 mode. So on these, you can change the fluid every 60,000 miles, no sweat. Now, of course, if you're off-roading all the time, you're using it a lot, you want to change the fluid every 30,000 miles, two quarts, no sweat. Uh, it's a quick exchange process and it'll make the front differential last for the life of the vehicle. These are very robust, and you would probably have to never change a front differential. I never have in all my years. So, moving on to the transmission. The transmissions, they do vary based on your situation. So if you just bought a brand new vehicle, you wanna change the fluid once you hit 30,000 miles on the odometer, just fluid. Pan drop, clean the pan out, change the fluid. Make sure you use the Ford specified fluid because you gotta remember the characteristics of the fluid, the friction coefficient, all that stuff is all matched to the, the clutches inside and the calibration inside the PCM or TCM depending on your situation. Now, once you hit 60,000 miles in the odometer on your brand new truck, you wanna change fluid and filter. Again, another pan drop on there. Now, let's say you just bought the vehicle, maybe it's five, six years old, maybe it's 15 years old like this one. First thing, get in there, drop that pan, do a fluid and filter change, and then you can do it every 60,000 miles thereafter, fluid and filter change, okay? And that'll keep the transmission happy. You gotta realize like something like this, these older transmissions, they're servo and band based, there's a lot of wear points on there, whereas the newer ones, the 6R80, 6R60, uh, 6R75, the 10R80 that just came out, they're all solenoid based. So they're very sensitive to any kind of contamination. And now Ford on the newest ones, like 15 and newer, uh, 6R80s, um, they're putting two magnets in the pan because the metal contamination is such an issue with the sensitive electronics inside. So you don't want to mess around with that. It's a very expensive item to replace. Moving on back to the transfer case here. Transfer cases are pretty darn simple inside. Uh, but they are constantly spinning. So this part right here is always spinning, the input and output on there. But of course, the chain and the drive to the front is not always spinning unless you select four-wheel drive. So these, you can change them you know, every 60,000 miles and probably be okay. For me personally, because it's so easy to change, there's a fill and drain plug on there, and it takes like 10, 15 minutes, two quarts of fluid. I change them every 30,000 miles. It'll keep it happy. Remember, there's no real filter in there and there's no external cooling on these. Since we're right here, fuel filters. Fuel filters on gasoline vehicles, you can go 30,000 miles, no sweat, okay? Uh, for the, um, let's say, 08 and older vehicles. 09 and newer, a lot of Fords have a lifetime filter in the tank. You don't need to change those at all. Now, as far as diesel's fuel filters, you want to change them every 15,000 miles because a lot of that's common rail fuel nowadays and you want to make everything in there happy. It's very sensitive to any kind of uh, contamination inside of there. You don't want any failures with the fuel system. Moving on back to the rear differential on here. The rear differential, again, is it's just air-cooled back here, okay? It's doing work at all times to push the vehicle down the road. So if you're 
just driving along, no big deal, not using it for towing that much, you can wait 60,000 miles, no sweat, okay? Uh, if you're towing a lot, you know, using the truck a lot for heavy loads in the bed, you know, for a construction truck, let's say, you wanna change your fluid every 30,000 miles, that'll keep it happy. Rebuilding a rear differential with the ring and pinions being machined so precisely, they're not cheap. And then if you want to do clutch packs inside, those are not cheap either. And there's lots of labor involved with setting up a rear differential. So if you have any kind of rear differential failure, it's very expensive, surprisingly expensive. So you want to change the fluid and keep that at bay. Well, we're back here and we're talking about it because Ford just recently did uh, add on a specified fluid service interval for brake fluid finally in the year 2020 vehicles. Let's talk about brake fluid since we're down here. The brake fluid, you know, it, it never gets changed on most of these vehicles and there's a lot of failures associated with that with sticking calipers and all that stuff. And the reason being is all the heat that's generated by the pads and the, and the rotor right here is going right into the caliper and the fluid kind of basically just sits here and gets pressure from the line. So the fluids inside are just kind of cooks. So you want to do a, a fluid change on there, a brake flush, uh, you know, at least like a bleed procedure type flush um, every time you do a brake job, which is around 60,000 miles or so. Do it every brake, brake uh, change and you'll be more than enough. You'll be good to go, okay? Let's go up top here and we'll talk about a few things like the cooling system, spark plugs, you just give some general advice on that and then we'll just go from there. Back up top here, let's go over a couple different items that affects all Ford vehicles. The first one being spark plugs. Now spark plugs on a regular naturally aspirated engine like this 543 valve here for instance, you know, anything non-EcoBoost, you wanna change spark plugs every 60 to 80,000 miles. And the reason being is I'm taking these plugs out for service and I'm seeing the plugs, the gap is just huge, well beyond factory spec. Not only are you gonna lose fuel economy and power, sure, who cares? But the bigger picture here is you're overworking the ignition coil, okay? You gotta remember this, that once that plug wears and the gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're requiring a higher KV to make that jump across the gap in there so the spark plug can fire. That is overworking the ignition coil. Now ignition coils are 40 to $50 for a good one, whereas spark plugs, seven to $10, maybe cheaper in some cases. So you do the math, you know? So it's a good idea. Now, as far as the EcoBoost models go, you know, the four-cylinder, inline four-cylinders, still 60 to 80,000 miles I'm seeing is just fine on those, whereas the V6 models, the, the 3.5 liter, it loves to eat spark plugs. It's really hard on them, all the boost is going through there. So every 50,000 miles in the 3.5 liter um, EcoBoost and the F-150. Now, as far as engine oil goes, I know this is a, this is a hot button topic, but I'm gonna give you my basic recommendations. Engine oil, conventional oil, you wanna change it every 3,000. Semi-synthetic, 4,000. Full synthetic, 5,000 or so, and you'll be good to go. The engine will last a long, long time if you get all that contamination out of there. I do not buy into the seven, 10,000 mile interval changes or longer. I do not buy into it. This stuff comes out of there black. You change the oil and it's still black because there's just so much in there that doesn't get filtered out. It's not good. It's a lot of abrasives going through the engine, okay? No matter how well the actual oil protects from breakdown and everything else. Now, as far as power steering goes, if your vehicle still has power steering, hydraulic power steering system, like any Ford 2011 and older, you want to change the fluid in there every 60,000 miles. It's not being worked all the time. There is a cooler. So every 60,000 miles in the power steering is good to go. Brake fluid. Remember earlier I was talking about brake fluid? Check out this brake fluid in here. It's like black. And the reason why it's doing that is because the, the, the heat down there, the calipers does break down the fluid. But brake fluid is also hygroscopic. So guess what? It attracts moisture. So when moisture gets in there with the brake fluid, it turns acidic and it starts attacking all the metal in the brake system. Not good. Yeah, it can get real expensive. Like I said, sticking calipers, uh, master cylinders have failed, and, you know, uh, ABS, HCUs, all that stuff gets really expensive. So it makes sense to change that fluid in there every 60,000 miles or so. Now, coolant. Coolant is a little bit different, okay? If you had the old style green coolant that Ford used forever back in the day, up until around 2000, 2001, you want to change that every 30,000 miles. After that, they switched this gold coolant right here. I love gold coolant. It's the great stuff. 
This stuff, I will push it to 100,000 miles, no sweat. 80,000 if you're being cautious, but 100,000 miles, no sweat. Now, if you have the new dark green coolant or uh, oak coolant or this new super yellow stuff, uh, I see a lot of fallout from those. So every 80,000 miles on that. All right, that about does it for the engine compartment here. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, cars and small SUVs next. Now, when it comes to the Ford cars and small SUVs, like the Taurus here, the Fusion, the Escape, the Edge, the Explorer, and the Flex, the powertrains are much different. So, of course, the intervals are going to change. Case in point, the transmission on these vehicles, the 6F15, the 6F35, and the 6F50, as you see here, have no serviceable filter to them. It's internal. So, in order, once it plugs up, they need to pull the transmission out, split the case halves in order to just get in there and change the filter. In order to avoid that, you want to change the fluid on these every 30,000 miles. Gets all the sludge out of here and prevents it from being picked up and plugging that filter over time. Another common failure point on these is the PTU right here. You can see these things have failures from seal leaks to bearing failures to them just simply exploding and it's all due to the fluid degrading inside of there. Think about it, it's surrounded by heat. You have the cat right here, you have the engine over here and the transmission that's bolted to. It's just sitting there cooking with no external cooling and only one quart of fluid inside of there. Yeah, that's why they're failing so often. Now, these ones you should change every 30,000 miles, if not sooner. Don't wait till 100, 150,000 miles like Ford says. If you do, when you pull that plug up there, it's gonna come out like tar. It's just gonna bake and degrade inside of there. Not good and it's a very expensive repair. Coming back here to the back of the vehicle, the rear differential unit right here is the same as just any other differential out there. So every 60,000 miles on these, is more than enough and it's gonna last the life of the vehicle, no sweat. All right, that's about it. Hopefully you got something out of this video. You know, they'll give you real world examples of reasons why you wanna maintain your vehicle at these shorter intervals. Now the whole reason for maintenance is to make these hard parts, these expensive, costly, time consuming hard parts last as long as possible, okay? I'm not trying to fear monger here saying you gotta change your transfer case fluid or it's gonna blow up. It's not gonna blow up, but we're just trying to make this stuff last as long as possible because it is very costly to repair in the end. And again, I have videos on just about all these different maintenance areas. So you can do this on your own, at your home, make sure it's done right and using the right fluids and of course, much cheaper. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.